Hello Dota 2 fans, and welcome back! This is Chicago Ted, bringing to you the High School Star League, and well, without any further ado, we'll bring you guys into the drafting phase. Radiant this Team is fan. Game 2 of a Best of Two series between Whitney Young Esports Diamond and Team Summer fan. Creek High School, going under the name of Era 5 and under the tags of Big. And this is the game to kick off the first season of the league, Radiant starting team. out with their brand new Dota chapter and looking to make it big. These teams certainly are, have some really good players, can play, pull off some really good stuff, and I imagine we'll be surprised constantly as we see these teams mature up as the league Ten progresses. These guys, if, well, they're going to be the future Dota stars team. of Dota 2, and the only hope that the North America, that North NA has to take on the big dogs of the scene right now and take home the trophy at the Internationals one of these years. Which, you know, I'll be casting eventually, maybe, remaining. maybe not. Uh, I don't know. Either way, Five we've got remaining. typical Summer Creek bands right now. The Nature's Prophet and the Queen of Pain, they Radiant took those two heroes Radiant. out. They don't like those two heroes. Meanwhile, Wendy Young opting to take out again the Elder Titan and the Pugna. And, well, we talked about these guys last game. It's the same exact ban phase. We'll see what they decide to go for in terms of picks, though. If they got to go for the same thing or if they go for something different. I would imagine that um, Summer Creek would have tried to respect ban a little bit of All Smiles as a Weaver a little bit. Because that was a very uh, a very thorn in the side p uh, pickup that Five Summer Creek had to deal remaining. with. But, as first pick, reserve He's time already. Time. Dropping down, the Summer Creek are going through their files, going through their minds, and trying to figure out what they want to do this time. Are they going to go for the uh, Venomancer Visage pickup again, or are they going to go for something a little different? Naga and there is a Naga Siren coming out, so Dying Naga, last game, was on the side of Whitney Young, and now they've decided... To let that one go. In their own hands, that is. So Naga Siren now being picked up for Summer Creek. And a very similar drafting style now. <laughs> Except in the opposite direction. If Whitney Young decided to go for the Visage Venomancer, then we'll be seeing the exact same draft. Except the team switched up. So I believe, remaining. actually, that I should uh, go ahead and do this real quick. Dire team pick. Because it was like this last game. I don't, I don't know why these guys won't listen to me. We need, we need an overlay that shows the team name, so I don't have to keep doing this. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it just it seems like, you know, you you think that that would, would be what you do. Either way, I mean, it works. It does what it needs to do, and I just need to adjust where the team names are. No big deal. Maybe a bit confusing at first, but Ten seconds we'll remaining. all get over it together. We got Rubik, gonna be the first pick up, and Five we didn't see him last game, now we are. This guy is... A lot of fun to watch and a lot of fun to play. Steals He's skills left, right, front, and center. And has fun doing so. I, you see ultimates if Rubik goes for the Aghanim Scepter. You'll see lots of ultimates being stolen up. Ag's upgrade on him. For those who don't know, 6.79 gave Rubik a little bit of a push in that when he picks up Ag's, he has a 0 second cooldown with his spell steal. And if that he steals an ultimate that has an Ag's upgrade, then he gets that Ag's upgrade. Unfortunately, if he doesn't have Aghanim Scepter and he steals an upgrade, uh, an ultimate from a hero that does have the Ag's upgrade, he doesn't get the Ag's upgrade. So, I guess that's a little bit of a balance out. But still, you pick up uh, Ag's on Rubik, and you're gonna have a hell of a lot of time, uh, a hell of a time having fun throwing the enemy skills right back at them. Weaver is gonna be the pickup this time for Summer Creek, opting to pick up the bug himself. And we can see they're mimicking Whitney Young's draft last game a little bit. Ogre Magi, though, is going to make his way onto the field. And that's one that I typically don't see. I, I believe pro players remaining. and pro teams don't usually pick up the, pick up the Ogre Magi just because of the amount of uh, RNG that's involved in him. When you're playing on a pro uh, level, you want to be able to control as much as you can what's going on with, uh, with a hero. And when you uh, take a look at Ogre, Ogre Magi, of course, he's a very strong support. Has a long range, dedic um, long range, reliable stun that can at sometimes have 
go for a lot more damage. And he's overall just a really good hero. He's got a slow. He's got a uh, buff up on damage. And, you know, if we see someone like an Ursa or a, um, or a Lone Druid coming out from Whitney Young, this could be level 1 Roshan. Typically when we see Bloodlust, we, uh, we get a level 1 Rosh as Bloodlust is a great level 1 early uh, spell to give that little extra bit of oomph. Crystal Maiden gonna be the ban out on Summer Creek. And now we see TA taken out on the side of or Crystal Maiden was ban out Whitney Young. Excuse me. TA gonna be the ban out on the side Five of Summer Creek. Juggernaut, the fourth. That's a little bit of a respect Got ban. Taking that back. one out. Don't want to deal with the jug again. Even though I don't believe Jug was the entire problem, they, I think we can narrow it down to Invoker and Weaver as the main key issues in the last game. And Invoker's still in the pick. Nope, he gets taken out. Whitney Young opting. They don't want him, so they're going to take him out of the pool. They played him rather well, too. I, I was quite surprised, quite pleasantly surprised at the amount of control that... Uh, who was it? Was it Squirtle? I think it was, yeah, it was Disconnected had on this hero. But they're going to opt for the Viper mid instead. And that's going to be a thorn, a huge thorn in the side of uh, Summer Creek. If they pick up any hero that's not that needs to tank up in order to be effective, then Viper is going to destroy. At your As Viper does the more damage that Die the enemy has missing. When you've got really tanky heroes that are trying to tank up more and more, but then you've got a Viper on the field, Viper's not going to, like, take it easy on them. He's gonna go ham on them and gonna take him out. Gonna make him suffer. Windrunner coming out. Gonna be the third pick for Summer Creek. A great disable, a great uti utility offlaner or support if you decide to run her like that. We already have the Weaver, so Ten seconds remaining. I wouldn't imagine they'd have the Windrunner offlaning instead Five of the Weaver, but remaining. it could happen. You could have the Weaver taking the safe lane farm. And a Weaver with safe lane He's farm does a lot can go a long way. In fact, we saw in the last game a timely Lincolns with power treads with Ring of Akala, and the Weaver deal dealt a lot of damage. You got the de Desolator on top of that, and it it was kind of scary. You saw the Weaver pick up, and well, you just wanted to run for cover. But now, as we go into the fourth pick now for both teams, already with the Rubik, the Ogre, Maggie, the Viper, I imagine. Whitney Young are going to opt for a um, a snowball and carry. Someone that deals that does very well in the mid game. We could see a Sven coming out from them. I wouldn't put him down on it. We have Rubik Ogre Magi, so probably not one with a huge dedicated stun. So maybe more along the lines of uh, a Luna. They have the tank with the Ogre Magi. They don't typically need a tanky, uh, a tanky carry. Ten they could go for the Alchemist. Remaining. That might be a decent pickup Tinker. for them. They've got Tinker, though, who... Radiant well, it looks like Viper pick. won't be taking the mid. It's going to be the Tinker instead. And, well, we saw Disconnected. Did very well with the, uh, with the multi-button, multi-intensive hero that Invoker is. When you give him a Tinker, I imagine he's going to be able to do pretty well with that hero. So I look forward to seeing the Tinker pick up, how the Tinker is played in this game. And it's going to be up to uh, Summer Creek to see Ten what they're going to do to deal with that. Puck. They're going to go for the Puck. Puck versus Tinker. Dada That's an interesting lane to have out, but I imagine the Puck should have a pretty decent time in this lane. Phase shifting out the Rockets is a ranged hero, so it doesn't have to get within range enough for the laser to go off. As well as March of the Machine, staying relatively Ten away from that. Remaining. But, as it stands right now, Tinker's got a lot Five of burst damage, remaining. and Summer Creek has a lot of squishy heroes. So, I would think they'd want some Reserve sort of time. real Five dedicated stunner remaining. or silencer, just to reduce the effectiveness of this Tinker. And, of, of course, you've got Radiant the Naga Siren Team Song of the Siren. Of course, you've got the Waning Rift for the Silence on Puck. But well, let's take a look. Summer Creek, they've got a carry. They've got an offlaner. They've got a tri-laner support. And they've got a mid. Are they going to go for a jungler? Maybe Ten pick up a... Uh, someone like a um, Five an enigma. Remaining. Are they going to go for the lifestealer? Which 
against the Viper might not be the greatest pickup, but Reserved still is pretty effective and synergizes very well with Puck. Dive and we'll just team. leave it up to them to see what they go for. Meanwhile, Whitney Young, they've got their off laner, they've got their uh, mid laner. Now they just need someone to go with the Ogre Magi and the Rubik in lane. And as I said, the Alchemist could be a pretty decent pickup. The two stuns you throw down the Acid Spray don't even need the Unstable Concoction, really. A couple points up in Acid Spray, maybe 2-1 at level 3. And you've got a Ten pretty dead three. enemy hero. They're going to go for the lifesteal of themselves. Radiant team pick. And when you've got two stuns, well, there you go. There you go. And lifesteal with the Rage should be able to do fairly well versus what Summer Creek has to offer. So I like this pickup. And then you pick, you factor in the Tinker, most likely going to get a Blink, as well as can be anywhere on the map at once. Summer Creek are going to opt for the very hard carry again. So they need, what they need to do is they need to do the exact opposite of what they did the last game. They need to not be so aggressive, they need to stay alive from minute one until that Animage gets off the ground. If the Animage dies once or twice in the early game, that Summer Creek are going to be at a serious disadvantage because we watched how Whitney Young just exploited the early game advantage that they had and made things absolutely difficult. So guys, as we're going into the game of, or game two of this best of two series, you're listening to the one, the only Chicago, Ted. And you're listening, you're probably already on my Twitch channel, so go ahead and press the follow below the stream. As well as go to the High School Star League. Their information should be on the screen right now. As well as right around here, these guys are going to have an interesting season ahead of them. So, without further ado, on the dire okay, side, this back. time we have Tatsuki playing the Rubik. All smiles on the Viper. Care Bear Dragon playing the Lifestealer Disconnected on the Tinker. And Squirtle playing the Rubik. I think I already said that, but it doesn't really matter. Squirtle, no, he's going to be playing the Ogre Magi. Meanwhile, for the Radiant side, Daniel will be playing the Puck. We have Camille on the uh, Anti-Mage, Drew playing the Windrunner, Nips on the Naga Siren, and Raymond is going to be playing the Weaver. A little bit of a shuffle going on as they're trying to figure out what lanes they want to go for. This is going to be a safe lane Anti-Mage, and he's going to be up against an offensive Lifestealer and Rubik. And, well, Animage should not have an easy time in this lane. 30 seconds to battle. Lifestealer will pretty much out DPS the Animage in any way, shape, or form, at least in the early game. Once the Animage, though, starts getting a little bit more farm. Oh, come on, guys. I, I know you're in high school, but do a little bit more maturity here. <laughs> Either way, he's just saying hi to you guys. Hello guys, how you doing? <laughs> Either way, so, as I was saying, the Animage should have a decent time as this game progresses. One thing Lifestealer really needs in this game is to have plenty of mana to go on and use all his spells, to use Rage, to use Infest if things are getting fishy. But if he doesn't have the mana, and well, hold that thought, it's going to be a Rubik and the Ogre Magi on this lane, so Animage is going to have a lot of trouble. But again, if Lifestealer gets drained from mana, then his effectiveness starts to fall off. And Any Mage is a high armor, middle HP hero, which Lifestealer favors high HP, low armor heroes. So Big Nips immediately going to take a fire blast, and Will is going to walk away with a little bit of damage done to him, but nothing too consequential. Camille struggling on the last hits right now. We take a look. He hasn't hit a single one just yet, but still, 50 seconds into the game. Big Daniel throwing out the orb, doing some harass, and in the off lane, it's just going to be Weaver versus Viper. And I have to say, I think I favor Viper just a little bit more in this lane. I imagine Animage might have had an easier time picking up the uh, Quelling Blade first, but he makes a smart decision, and he goes for the extra regen. The Quelling Blade would have made it, made it so that he wouldn't have had a lot of regen this game, and he might be losing a couple of last hits, but his laning potential will stay pretty high. And He's not going to have to worry about getting forced off the lane, at least not early, which means he's going to constantly get some XP and get some points up in his um, in his mana break, in his ultimate, and 
a couple and his spell shield, and that should help him out as this game progresses, but for the time being, he's just going to be struggling in lane. It's going to look like Rubik making his way, though, towards the middle lane, and I think they want to go ahead and try to get a first blood out on Puck. They certainly have the laser to deal a little bit of damage at level 3, two points up in that. And, well, Rubik is going straight in behind. It looks like he wants the Courier Snipe. But is not going to find anything. He's going to ping it out. Going to go onto the high ground and probably just wait. Wait for that Courier to come down. Puck is getting close to picking up the bottle. And once that comes out, this might get a little hairy. It is only a walking Courier. They change it so that flying Courier doesn't happen until 3 minutes. So, if you walk that Courier to you before 3 minutes, if it's not upgraded then anyone and their grandmother can take out that courier. And Tinker, gonna bottle himself up a regen rune. Puck, still looking for that um that bottle. He's still about 100 gold away from that. And Rubik, he's wasting time right now. Only level 1, but if he can find that courier, it'll be a little worth it. That's a lot of gold that goes to your team. Puck, though, certainly doesn't have the last hitting to uh, back up getting the courier just yet. He's sitting... 6-1 and one to Tinker's 14-3, and three, and that's a problem. Puck needs to snowball heavily in this game. If he can't get the snowball, then things start to become an issue for him. He's going to have the bottle really soon. I would implore the Radiant to pick up their Flying Courier. A minute, three minute hits. They should have it, like, right now. Otherwise, it's going to get sniped off. Don't the moment me. Puck grabs this bottle, it's gone. Puck, a little slate on the face yet. Gain an eye out. He's going to have the bottle up, 10 gold, 5 gold, he's going to be pushing it, it's going to be coming out to him, and thing, yeah, that's going to be of an issue, there's the bottle, Curry though, doesn't pick it up, yep, the Curry now, bringing the bottle out, Rubik though, I think he was spotted, but do they still bring the Curry, I don't think that Rubik was spotted, Ogre Magi, sending out a uh, Fire Blast out, but he could be first blood right now, as one more auto attack from the, um, from the Manny Mage, he's got 5 seconds on cooldown for his blink. Can he get it? No, that's going to be a power shot from Drew. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Puck face shifting out what he can for this Courier. Bla dodging out the Rubik, and he's going to be able to get away just fine. Care Bear Dragon, though, in a little bit of trouble. There's the uh, power shot to fly, but doesn't quite ha latch. And now Anti Mage is going to die to Tinker. And that's the mid lane, getting a solo kill out on the Anti Mage. And well, Animage is that's exactly what you don't want to happen. The Animage cannot die. Not sure what he was uh what he was planning walking up this way. He probably should have just taken the river down. He knew Radiant's that the uh life was attack. down. He knew he would have gone through zero adversity if he had done that. And maybe when he was right about here, just blinked up onto the high ground and walked all the way back to tower, but instead he makes his way to the mid lane and that's gonna be disconnected, just easily picking up that kill and Animage set behind. Animage didn't get the first blood and won't be able to um, stay alive. He does have 773 gold though, but typically right now, he should already have his uh, his ring of health right now and be working on that perseverance. Double damage now in the top rune spot and we have Tatsuki again on the Rubik, gonna be the one to disconnect from this game. We've got a pause dedicated to him. Tatsuki, of course, was the guy last game, the Naga Siren that disconnected, so might be having some issues in this game. We certainly feel bad about that, but if he can't reconnect back onto this game, it's gonna be uh, Whitney Young at the serious disadvantage in this one. We don't really want to see them play 4v5. They were able to do it last game, though. That was because the uh, Tatsuki had already disconnected after it was pretty much GG for um, Whitney Young. They just got so far ahead. And at that point, it was just too much to stop them. But this is still a volatile game. And you lose your main support. Oh, man. Yeah, they're going to have to play without the Rubik. And... I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I mean, they're relying on that Rubik to give them good initiation to pick off the anti mage. If they can't get that initiation, then pick off on the anti mage are going to be a little bit harder. And well, you're not going to be able to shut down this anti mage just as much. Puck with that mischance. It's that's a very that's a substantial mischance. Yeah, 100 is a pretty substantial mischance to have. 
but it's gonna be Viper. There is no time lapse available. There we go. One more auto attack. Can he get off? It doesn't even matter. Viper Strike is enough, and Weaver is gonna fall solo to the Viper. And I was talking about how the Viper should have an easy time in this lane. Well, <laughs> microing the Rubik, but that's exactly why. Before time lapse, Weaver is a squishy hero, and even after time lapse, if you can catch him after that time lapse. Scoochie only saves him so much. Poison will still do a lot of damage to him. All, pretty much all DOTs will still do a lot of damage to him. And Viper is pretty much the king of damage over time. So even if you Scoochie away, when you come out of that Scoochie, if you get Viper striked up, you're going to be moving at the speed of nothing. And then the Viper is easily going to catch up to you with his 335 move speed. and You're back at square one. You're pretty much bone. In the bottom lane, trying to use that uh, Rubik to chain up th stuff, and looks like they were using it to pretty good effect. But Rubik at zero mana right now. And Animage, looking like he picked up the Ring of Health from the uh, from the Secret Shop. You know you can pick up the Ring of Health right here. <laughs> As the Animage not entirely realizing that right now, either that or just didn't want to reveal it. They didn't want the enemy to know that he was doing fairly well. At least not too terrible for the time being. There's the orb out. On is connected as the sirens pass by my building. The dream coil was used, but the puck still takes a fall. Big Nitz is actually going to fall as well, but Tinker takes fall. That's zero XP going the way of Naga Siren and Puck Bow, and they both went down. Trying to take out a Tinker. That was not a good engagement for them. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, enemies might be in a little bit of trouble. Takes a um, an Ignite just to deal a little bit of damage, but should be just fine for the time being. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, that's going to be Phase Boots out for... Not on the other side of the map, on the other side of the river. It's Phase Boots out for the Life Stealer. And there's Fire Blast happening down at Camille. Big Drew is there, though, to try to keep him up a little bit longer. 5 to 2 right now at 7 minutes, hitting 1 KPM, and certainly a decent game going on right here. Caravan Dragon taking a little bit of harass from the Windrunner, but nothing too consequential. There's a Fire Blast now on Camille. He has a Blink, though he can get himself away just easily, but Big Drew might not be so lucky. There's the Windrun. He should be fine. Aimage again, opting not to bring his Ring of Health down, and that's going to cut down his uh, regen capabilities just a little bit. Buying some good last hits though. He's sitting 11 and 1, but the Life Stealer is 31 and 5. In fact, the three main last hitters are 3xing. There we go. We see uh, Life Stealer having to rage on out to try to avoid what he could. Didn't even think he needed it. There's the uh, Shackle hitting beautifully, but just not enough to follow up. Now, Care Bear Dragon, a lot of trouble. A couple more auto attacks. He should be going down, but he can run away. He's got the phase boots out now and a lot of pooled uh, tankers. So he'll be just fine, just taking it in stride, and Animage more the one to um, take a disadvantage in that in in encounter. He finally has his Ring of Health on his person right now, which is going to re uh, hype up his regen just a little bit. It's going to make him a little bit more active in the lane. That's one of the arguments for going uh, Quelling Blade on this hero, is that you can uh, opt for a little bit more regen, but the Quelling Blade is going to get you to your Ring of Health faster. And that arguably is a very significant regeneration. I mean, that's putting you at 6.1 constantly. And Care Bear Dragon, a lot of trouble. There's the, um, the Mana Void. But not able to do enough, and Life Stealer going to get away. Of course, Animage probably could have dived under Tower, but he would have fallen as well, and that's not what you want to do. Better to uh, not get the kill and stay alive than to get the kill but then fall. Animage cannot die. He's constantly be getting XP, constantly be getting gold. Daniel taking a lot of damage. We see that burst potential coming from the Tinker. and You're just going to have to back off. This is... It's really scary. Like, if you're not able to time it out correctly, Puck does not do well versus the Tinker because it's a lot of burst damage. If you can get the phase shifts off, then you're in decent standing. But until then, you're in a little bit of trouble. Lifestealer now coming back from his little stay at the well. Meanwhile, Daniel and Drew... Coming back into the mid lane, they want to find the Tinker again. There is the orb. They're going to fly out. They've got the Dream Coil to use. The Waiting Rift off the mark with the Dream Coil coming out. There's a rocket. 
And now Puck needing to phase shift out because the laser was getting ready to fly, but they does have mana. And there's a laser and Puck gonna fall. Two heroes committed to killing this Tinker. And they still can't bring him down. He's got boots of travel right now, ten and a half minutes, and sitting on 800 gold on top of that. That's his, this is a scary Tinker. Picking up the Ring of, uh, Ring of Regen. Now, with the Soul Ring. And in the ball lane, the bottom lane, Camille, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Care Bear Dragon. Trying to do the damage. Trying to go the distance, but just can't do it. And now, here comes Squirtle. Camille needs to get himself out of there. He does. A timely blink, and he is A-OK -okay for the time being. Things coming out. They want to kill Viper, but Viper is snowballing in this lane. High as CS on the board. Getting very close to an early mech. Radiant's and top tower has when you've got a team that can't do a Dyer's lot of damage in the early game, if the enemy gets a mech, then you're in a lot of trouble. And Weaver taking a rocket way past the tier 1 tower. That was almost sad Radiant's to watch. The rocket flew attack. out from right here and traveled all this way and hit the Weaver right about here. That, that, that's just mean. That is really mean. Animage trying to do what he can, but again, these greedy carries, and Sunder Creek just can't seem to pull their weight with them. They got, I, I would think Summer Creek needs to learn to be a bit more aggressive. Pick Radiant's more aggressive picks, and then attack. maybe you can do what you uh, need to do. If you're going to go greedy, you can't be giving up kills in the mid lane, you can't be giving up kills in the off lane. Radiant's a greedy lineup, is under attack. the Naga Siren is a good hero to have. But a greedy lineup should not include a Weaver as well as an Animage. Now Puck in a little bit of trouble. Took a lot of burst damage. A lot, the the Martian Machine is doing a lot to follow up. But Again, the Summer Creek, if they want to run these greedy lineups, they need to balance it out. They need to grab heroes that do a lot in the early game. The Nautica Sirens, the Crystal Maidens. The Windrunner can do a little bit, but... Her stun isn't too impressive until it gets about four points in, and even then she needs to hit it on the skill shot. Weaver requires a lot of farm before he starts becoming a heavy damage dealer, and... Well, the puck just isn't gonna get you where you need to be. Now we have Camille in a lot of trouble, has the blink on out, but doesn't get there enough. Tinker finds a kill, but it looks like Big want to turn around, but they can't. There is the flame burst, or the fire blast, and... Ogre Magi picking up a kill of his own. The Tinker does fall, but it's a two for one, and that's your that's your carry for a mid laner. I mean, you can't be losing the enemy. She's already 0-2 right now, and getting nowhere close to his Battle Fury. I mean, what do you do when you're an anti mage who your entire team is relying on you to deal the damage to be the carry, and you can't get a Battle Fury before 20 minutes? Things start getting very difficult for you. Meanwhile, All Smiles is having a dandy old time in the top lane. He's got his mechanism. You can pretty much ignore any chance that... Or he can pretty much shrug off anything that comes after him. Like, we've got the Naga Siren flying behind. Okay, she throws out the net. What then? Here's the Tinker anyway. I don't think they can do anything. Tinker and Viper is a scary combination. But a farm to Tinker and a farm Viper? That's even worse. And now we've got three heroes rotated up. We're about to see what their attempt to do this with is. Here we go. All smiles getting silenced up. There's the net as well as the uh, shackle. But with the mechanism keeping all smiles alive. The viper strike to fly. Daniel should be dead. Another dream coil. A dream coil to fly out. But all smiles is still dealing the damage. Can he kill? He can kill the wind of uh, the uh, Naga Siren. He's got a double kill. Meanwhile, disconnected, teleporting in, that's a triple. Four kills going the way of Whitney Young. It's 3 to 13 right now, and well. My advice to Summer Creek tighten up your play a little bit. Losing kill heroes in the mid lane, losing heroes in the off lane. Taking 2v1s that you should be winning, but you don't, that's going to tell you that you're not doing something right. So, again, my advice to them, of course, these are high school kids. They, they, they should be focusing on school, but tighten up your play. 
Either way, we have Squirtle taking a lot of damage, but he's walking away. He's just lumbering back behind Camille. It's now blinked back. He throws out the Mana Boy, but he instantly dies disconnected. Who is able to walk away with nothing through. Having the wind run out, the rage keeping Care Bear Dragon alive and kicking throughout, or awake and kicking, rather, throughout the duration of the Song of the Siren. But a one for one, Ogre Magi for the carry. I mean, he didn't even get the kill, too. That's, that's just, that's mean. 0-4 on this Animage, and, well, this is reminiscent of last game. The Phantom Lancer not able to find the uh, lead he needs, and just getting pushed so far back behind that he can't carry, he can't come back from it. And he's trying to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with this uh, Life Sealer. Has to blink himself out. Nope, he's gonna have the Nagasire coming up for a backup. It should be fine for the time being. Meanwhile, Viper dealing a lot of damage to this Weaver. Does get away. A-okay. And about 200 health. But Weaver is nowhere close to his Lincoln Sphere. Andy Mage is nowhere close to his Battle Fury. This is just going to be a slow push into the Tier 3s right now. There is little to nothing that Summer Creek can do versus this Viper at the moment. With the Yasha, with the Mechanism, the Ring of Akala, he's got... 19 armor, he's got an instant 300 uh, HP whenever he, 250 sorry, HP, whenever he needs it, plus a passive 4 HP per second regen, extra armor, extra 2 armor when he drops it, it's, it's hard to fight against him. And now, Big Nips is almost immediately going to be blown up, mega kill for Disconnected, and well, I don't like calling it at 17 minutes, but Take a look at the golden XP, and we're going to safely assume this is GG. Big Drew is going to take a fall past the tier 1 tower. Tower is going to take a fall, and Whitney Young don't have any reason to stop this push. There's, there's nothing that Summer Creek can do versus them at the moment. They try to fight, they try to do what they can, but they can't do anything. Care Bear Dragon looks to be picking up his arm, Little Modigian, very soon. Anti Mage has to blink out, is not going to have to blink in enough time. There's a Viper Strike, he's going to fall. Unstoppable spree for the Tinker himself, who's probably going to be picking up a Dagon pretty soon. I don't agree with a Dagon pickup, but might be picking it up. He's got a Blink Dagger armlet now on the, uh, on the Life Stealer. And GG, pretty much as it is, stands right now. At 18 minutes, 17 to 4. Whitney Young single-handedly. Their their team's KPM is one. That that's incredible. They've more than four times the uh, the kills that Summer Creek has, and they've done it with one less hero. Carebro Dragon getting shackled up. This could be a double kill, but Carebro Dragon. Popping the armlet, stays alive for a little bit longer. Can he get the infest off? He can't. Weaver, finding two. And that's going to put him up a little bit. Not going to give him what he needs to win the game, but certainly going to give him a little bit extra. The Tinker, he's going to find out three soon. How's he going to deal with it? Here's the three, the rock to fly. Getting silenced up almost immediately. He could fall here. In fact, he will fall here. Naga Siren to be the casualty. Big Drew staying alive. Why all smiles and no Big Drew taking Ginger a fall. So... And all smiles looks like he wants the Weaver. Is he gonna find the Weaver? No, he's gonna find the Animage. Animage in a very pr big predicament. Gonna get away with just enough HP to stay alive. Is Raymond gonna get away? Raymond oh, should fall stopped. here, and he does. All smiles. Picking up an unstoppable top. spree, and he's got he's picking up Agon and Scepter. Oh man, that's what every seven seconds you can launch a Viper Strike. That's just awful. It's not something you want to fight against, not at very least. Radiance middle tower hey, Strew, now attack. on the top rune spot. And Dyer's that, that could be good in the hands attack. of a Viper. Chase down your opponents and do it with style. With a nice little red flare following you. There's a net down on the, the, the life sealer, but he's just kind of shrugging it off. Don't think I mentioned it, but the Weaver did die. Yeah, I didn't mention Dyer's it. The Weaver did die behind the tier 1 or attack. around the tier 1. And he was the one that got all the kills in that last fight. So, 
the fact that he died essentially nullifies that advantage that he just picked up for himself. Squirtle might be in a little bit of trouble. Can they throw the net out? They can't. Look like Naga Siren had the casting animation, but walked just out of range as it looked like nighttime had just hit. And that disconnected. Here he comes, unleashing his arsenal. Wasn't quite enough. It looks like Life Sealer doesn't want Nips to get away. It's just gonna slap him in the face, bring him downtown. And... Well, give him a notice of eviction from the game. As even with the Song of the Siren, that rage allowing Life Sealer to still do the damage. And Viper pushing in the top lane with the Aghanim Scepter. And that is 12 second cooldown. So it's like Hook, not like, uh, not 7 seconds. 12 seconds. There we go, Care Bear Dragon, Life Sealer. Taking a lot of fire. He's gonna fall here. A great pickoff so for dead, Summer Creek. Fire Blast happening on Big Drew. There's the Ignite trying to deal a little bit of extra damage. Not gonna be quite enough to kill him, but certainly enough to be a nuisance. Now Camille taking the Ignite. And Marks the Machine flying all over the place. There's your first Viper Strike, and Nips is dead. Second one coming up in seven seconds. And now an extra 1,000 gold going the way of the Viper. Top lane pushing in pretty heavily. Mid lane with a great push, and this push shouldn't end anytime soon. Viper making his way to the bottom school. Tinker finding the Animage somewhere odd in the map. Where, where was that? It was in the bottom lane. What was the Animage doing all the way out here? Basically, the extent of Radiant's map control is this right here. If you're outside, anywhere, you're dead. If you're here, you're dead. But most importantly, if you're here, <laughs> you're dead. So Animage getting a little overzealous with his farming and still is sitting on the same exact thing he was sitting on 10 minutes ago. Well, actually, no, he's got the Perseverance, he's got the Claymore, so we might be looking at a 26-minute uh, Battle Fury for this, uh, for this uh, Animage. And now with the Ignite, the Fire Blast to happen on the Drew. He's going to back off. Here comes the Tinker immediately blinking himself out, just sending a marking machine to push out the wave. And the official timer, 22 minutes and 40 seconds. And the kill score is 23 and 8. And Quan Ni Young have amassed themselves a 12,000 goal and XP advantage in this game. Things coming out to the hard camp right here. We see a little bit of engagement going on in the mid lane. Weaver trying to do what he can. There's the orb out. They're trying to find a life sealer, but they can't. Instead, they're going on Squirtle. Can they find him? Can they throw him out? Here comes Disconnected, immediately blowing up the Windrunner. And there's nothing he can do. He's just got TP on now there. There's the Ignite down the Wind Weaver, who should be mo moving really slow when he comes off that Scoochie. In fact, does. Still defending the Tier 3s, though. But here's the push up. And life sealer doing great damage to this tower. There's a Fire Blast. Weaver trying to do what he can, but not able to do enough. I am compelled. And there is a uh, Mystic Staff now on Tinker, getting very close to a uh, Hex, and well, very close to the point where of no return, pretty much. Look at all the machines, they're high-fiving each other as they go by. Things coming out, I think they want their push, Dyer wants to push on the bottom lane. But Viper, it's like, nah bro, I got this top lane. I got this. He's going to be picking up a Manta style rather soon, sitting on the ultimate orb as well as the Asha. And now all five. They got, there is a Song of the Siren. They're all going in. They all want Viper. Can they kill him? He doesn't have any way to get out of this. He's going to go on Kami. And he's going to kill the Anti-Maze. He still has his mechanism. What can he do? He's going to stay and fight. Pop the mech, dude. Pop the mech. He doesn't pop the mech. He had, no, he did pop the mech. I don't know where he popped the mech. I don't know when he popped the mech. But he got the mech. He got the Animage, though. Gave 900 gold to the Weaver, but killed the Animage. Weaver going to find himself the ultimate orb now, and going to have a Lincoln Sphere within the next five minutes, if all goes well. Meanwhile, when he young, the Dolphins are content to farm Roshan. And <laughs> disconnect, just sending in lasers. Rooney's arm, you got laser beams! 
and there you go. He picks up the kill. Life's either gonna find you against the immortal and this fancy timer. Each little block stands for a minute, eight minutes in total, and then you've got an inner timer which shows the randomized between one and three minutes, or zero and three minutes rather. But we'll look more on that if this game goes on eight more minutes. Anti-Mage just trying to push out what he can, and it's getting close to 26, and he doesn't have his Battle Fury. He fell to the Viper, and that sent him back a lot again. Anti-Mage cannot find a break. He is 0-7 right now. And... Well, once he gets the Battle Fury, then what? I mean, you get the Battle Fury. The Battle Fury is saying, okay guys, I can farm now. Well, great, you can farm, but... You got 30 seconds to do it, because the enemy is pushing in our, our racks. And the anti-mage that can farm a butterfly in 30 minutes is the anti-mage I look up to. <laughs> I mean 30 seconds, rather. Here we go, it looks like all five going in on Squirtle. And Ogamagai should take a ball here, 10 to 25. And a couple of great pickoffs going the way of Summer Creek, but again, their anti mage is not going to be pulling his weight until at least at this point, the 45 minute mark. Can't stop the guy from trying though. Trying really hard, getting some good last hitting. 69 and 12 though. We take a look at the last hits, and he is being pretty much tripled up by the uh, Viper. Doubled up rather by the Viper. And at 26 minutes, the Viper with the 150 last hits has got his Manta style, has got Aghanim Scepter, and has a mechanism. We take a look. GPM. His is 530, where the animage is less than 250. Discontinued, disconnected rather. Throwing in tons of machines. And, well, he can do a lot here. I mean, he's got the Nakes, uh, nakes Bomb inside of him. There's a Battle Fury, by the way, for the Animage. Top lane pushing in, Animage might be the one to go up there and try to farm it. Probably won't, though, with the Battle Fury. He's going to be able to push down waves really quickly. There's that cleave coming out for you, but disconnected is going to make things hard for him with two or three waves of machines. Just beating at your doorstep. We take a look at the amount of damage that's doing it. It did just brought the puck down to half. No contest. I would almost imagine that uh, Radiant would go mass uh, blade mails just to deal with this. Weaver almost has his Lincoln Sphere. There's a ward up now for the high ground. They know it's there though. Do they have a sentry ward to take it out? Yeah, he gets reclaimed in three minutes. Here comes Disconnected. There's the Naix Bomb. Plenty of damage going out both ways. The Hex showing its face. Disconnected in a little bit of trouble, but should be just fine. In fact, Radiant's he's going on. He wants Kami. Kami, though, not going to fall. But the result of that was two kills, and now there's a Rax. And the Glyph being used up for the time being, but I'm not sure they can do anything with it. You're up to fly out. The Viper Strike happening on the Weaver. He's got himself really close. He needs to be really careful. Radiant's and all the smiles is getting way back attack. behind enemy lines. But it's not it's nothing. As this Rax is falling really quickly. Weaver probably gonna take a fall in a couple of next couple of seconds. He's gonna fall right about now. Puck falling as well. Double kill for the Viper. And big nips, just a little bit late. What can they do? They can't do anything. Rax is down the middle lane. And, well, Whitney Young has all the time in the world to turn this into something. Big Kami, looking for a kill, but just can't find it. He uses the Mana Void, and it just doesn't do enough. Ultra kill now for the Viper. Is it going to be a Rampage? I think it's going to be a Rampage. Oh, no. Lifestealer, why you do this? I want to scream Rampage. Puck actually finds the, uh... Oh, come on. I guess it's not worth the timer, so it wasn't a Rampage. But Puck... Found the Ogre Magi in the back lines, but it wasn't enough. And now, knock, knock, knocking on T4s. Whitney Young going straight in Radiant's for the game. 29 minutes, 50 seconds. And they're just taking out buildings. They're content to just farm up. The longer that uh, Summer Creek wants to go on this game. I mean, it is a game too, so you might as well go all the way. But... There's a point when you know you've probably lost the game and 
That point is at 20,000 gold disadvantage. They're just going on the bottom tower. And bottom tower Summer Creek are afraid to initiate. They go in on the Viper, Radiance and it looks like they're going to be able to take the Viper, but they lose their courier in the process. We saw him doing a loop-de-loop -loop right there. That was kind of fun to watch, but... And now... Looks like batting back and forth, standing toe to toe right there. Disconnect, they're gonna go ahead and push in the top lane. There's two sets of racks remaining, one of which is naked. And Tinker's gonna make this really hard to defend. He's got multiple waves of marching machines going up, pushing them up to the tier threes. And, well, Whitney Young Dolphins are content to just let this game roll on. They know they've won. They're just gonna let it happen. Meanwhile, two minutes till Roshan comes up and live. Aegis long gone. Was popped, but even then it was gone at almost like 20 seconds after it popped. And now, Care Bear Dragon pushing in the bottom lane. But he's gonna be initiated on probably by Drew and Camille. Nope, they opt not to as they see multiple heroes coming in to back up the life stealer. And now they're left to defend these racks, which they probably, in all intents and purposes, cannot. There's a Viper Strike. Big Drew, even with Windrun, can't get away fast enough. Black, big Camille, trying to get away, but there's a double kill for the Tinker. As he just finds what he needs to find. Big Daniel, trying to fall as well. Triple kill now for the Tinker. That's going to be an ultra kill. Give him four, and give him game. As the bottom racks have taken a fall, the top racks to be next. And then tier 4 is an Ancient, and then it's gone. Tinker going back to base to try to regen up a little bit. Big Nips, come on. Get a Rampage. This is your time. Big Blaze. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> and a tier 4 is just casually falling down. Radiance middle tower has fallen. So guys, a little bit of a stomp, but again, I have plenty of suggestions for uh, Summer Creek, and that's to try to sol solidify up your play in the early game. You can't give early kills if you go for an aggressive lineup. And if you can work on solidifying your game, then you probably have these have these games down pat. But until then, this was an absolute roll. Coming out from uh, Whitney Young, I won't sugarcoat it at all. They were really strong the entire game. Aside from a few pickoffs, they were able to exploit the early game advantage and just take it to the end. 32 minutes, 54 minutes, uh, seconds is the official game time. 12 to 41. Whitney Young take this best of two series 2-0. Guys, you have been listening to Chicago Ted casting for you this series, the High School Star League. The season started, season one, or the first ever season, starting tonight. So, as the game comes to a close, again, Chicago Ted, you were watching me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Chicago underscore underscore Ted. Twitter, at Ted Casts. If you want to see more of me, you can visit those places, see whenever I go online. But for now, I'm signing off, so I'll see you all next time.